Welcome to Bible class. Here's a fun fact I would like to share with you. Did you know the sea thugs are both female and male at the same time? That means they can all lay eggs. Good morning, good morning everyone, and welcome to Spirit Week. We're starting this from Tuesday to Tuesday so we can get four lessons in, but today is tie-dye day. So if you got the memo on Facebook, you know that if you want to participate, let's wear tie-dye today, and I would love to see pictures of you, so send them in to us. We'll post them on our Bible Class Facebook page. I want to thank Emily from Missouri for our class participation. Our missionary highlight today is Robert and Sherry Moses, and they're serving in the Middle East, Russia. We're going to pray for them today. Our faith statement is still very powerful. I'm believing for that revelation to happen, and I'm believing with you for your community as well. So this morning, we are going to be moving into the story from Abraham to Joseph. We are talking about Stephen's final message. This is part two. So this morning, I want us to pray together. If you haven't scored take a moment, get in God's presence, and let's get into his word together. Jesus, we love you and thank you for this time together. Thank you for this day. I pray Jesus blessings over our class and our students and their parents and their teachers, Lord. We just pray that your wisdom would flood us today as we get in your word. And I pray that you would raise up a generation of those that will seek you, those that will walk in obedience and faithfulness to you as Joseph did. And today, Father, we pray for the Moses family in Russia, and we ask God that revival would be there, that the peace and strength of God would come to them and their family. And Lord, we ask God that you would cause us to be missionaries in our own sense, in our own communities, and that there would be a revelation of Jesus' name baptism that is sweeping across our communities, God. In the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for it, and we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen, amen, amen. All right, let's get right into the Word. And the patriarchs, moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan and great affliction and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred, threescore and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers and were carried over into Sychem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emmer, the father of Sychem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live. Everyone has their favorite Bible character, and probably one of my favorites among many is Joseph. I love the story of Joseph. Uh, the life of Joseph <clears throat> is written in Genesis chapter 37 through 50. So Moses, in writing Genesis, gave a lot of room to the story of Joseph. It was very important. Lots of lessons. We don't have time to cover it today, but I'm going to take a few lessons from Joseph's story that can be learned and applied in our modern day life um, to inspire us that if God can do it for Joseph, if he can work through you and he can work through me to change a generation for the glory of God. Joseph's ultimate purpose was to save a generation from famine, to save them and to rescue the children of Israel from starvation, and he did. He, he allowed God to use him just as Esther allowed God to use her as well. Joseph was sold by his brethren. He was sold, he was lied on by Potiphar's wife, 
He was forgotten in prison for two years, and yet he remained faithful and obedient. And that's just the culmination right there of the lessons from Joseph. There's three things that we're going to focus on. The first one is that, and probably the most important lesson of all time, is that Joseph was faithful to God, and God was faithful to Joseph. Genesis 39 and 3 says, The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. God gave Joseph divine dreams at a very young age. Joseph had a God consciousness about him early on. And because of this, he was successful from the pit all the way to the prison and then finally to the palace. The Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. The second thing that we can learn from Joseph and his story is ethics. Joseph had a moral code of ethics that he carried even when no one was watching. The word ethics can be defined as a moral principle that governs a person's behavior or conduct in an activity. Joseph had incredible work ethics. And think of how often he was promoted because the favor of God was on his life. But he had to earn the respect by being a good steward of his time, talent, and treasure. We might think that everything came easy to Joseph and the promotions, but the truth is he worked very hard on his life skills and God took him places that he couldn't go on his own. The same applies for us if we're willing to be faithful to God, if we're willing to put in place disciplines and moral ethics and work ethics, God can use that to boost us into success and promotion that we could never get to on our talent alone. Psalm 76, six through seven says it this way, for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south, but God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. If we will do our part in honing in and developing our natural and spiritual gifts and talents, God opens doors for us to use them. And that promotion is the best way for success. And the third final thing is forgiveness. This is one of the most powerful stories on forgiveness. Forgiveness is a lesson that we can all use throughout our life. When faced with incredible odds, Joseph overcame them. And then he chose to forgive. (laughs) You know, it's funny because I think about all of his brothers being set before him. And he had the opportunity to literally have them... Uh, imprisoned and prosecuted or whatever you know he could have done anything he wanted to with them he could have taken revenge on his brothers he could have sent them home empty-handed but that was not the spirit of Joseph and that should not be our spirit either Joseph had the heart to reconcile and so should we forgiveness is a daily choice it's not a one-time thing forgiveness is choosing not to live in a victim mentality, but a victor's mentality. To move from look what they did to me, to look what God can do through that situation. I believe that the reason Joseph could forgive is because he saw the big picture. He trusted God and although it might have taken him a while, he realized how God was using all those situations for the good of not just his own life, but the entire nation of Israel. Whether it was the betrayal of his brothers, the lies of Potiphar's wife, or the fact that he was forgotten for those two years in prison, Joseph's response was, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. That perspective change radically altered his way of thinking and it can alter ours as well. The point of this lesson today is that Stephen's review of Jewish history gives a clear testimony of God's faithfulness and sovereignty. Despite the continued failures of his chosen people, 
and the swirling world events, God was working out his plan all along. So there's a couple things I want us to take home today. Number one, God is in control. Nothing surprises him. Number two, this world is not all there is. It will pass away, but God is eternal. Number three, God is just and he will make things right. Punishing the wicked and rewarding the faithful. And finally, God wants to use you. Just like Joseph, Moses, Stephen, he wants to use you to make a difference in your world. So from the pit to the prison to the palace, look at these circumstances as opportunities of true spiritual promotion. God bless. Have a wonderful day.